In this video, we're gonna talk about a really underrated exercise, the inverted rows. For some reason, everybody sees the opportunity to build muscle only with pull-ups or muscle-ups, but if you want to build a truly strong and big back, it's worth to implement inverted rows in your workout regimen. Why? We'll take a look in this video. What's up guys, it's Adam from gymnasticsmethod.com. If you don't want to miss my videos about bodyweight training and lifestyle, please subscribe and click on the bell. Thank you. And if you want to get access to all the Gymnastics Method workout programs, tutorials like planche, handstand or muscle up, nutrition guide, daily workouts and much more, click the link below and become a member now on gymnasticsmethod.com. So, inverted rows. Or, if you want to say it fancy, Australian pull-ups. The inverted row is a horizontal pulling exercise that is a perfect match for the push-ups. That's because this movement is usually used as the antagonist of the push-ups or other horizontal pushing exercises to maintain the harmony of the upper body. Furthermore, this exercise is a great back builder that deserves a spot in your workout plan. If you're all about learning skills, then do the inverted rows because it helps to get the front lever. But if you want to build muscle and get in shape, do inverted rows because it's a different stimulus to your muscles in the horizontal plane. Depending on how you do pull-ups, the inverted rows can involve even more muscles in the work than your pull-ups, adding more to get those gains. The inverted row builds your back perfectly and improves the pulling structure of your upper body. It hits the lats, trapezius, rhomboids, the real delts and your brachialis and biceps. Since many of the back muscles tend to get weaker and stretched, if you work a lot in front of the computer, your posture can get worse. With the inverted rows, you can fix that problem. If you have never done pull-ups in your life, then you better start with the inverted rows first. Many people consider inverted rows as the regression of the pull-ups. And if they can do some pull-ups, they neglect the inverted rows since that is easier. Okay, from that perspective it's true that pull-ups are harder and it's cool if you can do pull-ups. But that doesn't mean that you can't benefit from the inverted rows too. By the way, I think it's more a calisthenics mindset than other. For example, if we take a look at bodybuilders, they use both rows and pull-downs. There, it's not considered that one is more difficult than the other. It's a different exercise. They don't skip rows because they can do pull-downs, you get my point. Back to calisthenics, not to mention that many people completely skip the inverted rows because they want to do pull-ups immediately or they don't practice it enough so their pull-ups are not the best. Yes, since the inverted rows are really the prerequisites of the pull-ups. If you can do clean inverted rows, you'll be able to do pull-ups way easier. At the same time, I understand why people skip the inverted rows. Because of the equipment. If you look at the inverted row the way I prefer it, with rings and elevated legs, you need an elevated surface and rings, or at least a lower bar. Since many people train at home or in a park where there is no low bar, no rings, only if you have yours, an elevated surface is kinda circumstantial, so this exercise won't be done. There are higher pull-up bars everywhere that inspires people to learn the pull-ups even just for its name and height. By the way, if there is no lower bar, but the park has parallel bars, you can still use a single bar or both with placing your legs up and do the rows. Regardless, I recommend you to invest in a pair of rings because even if you only use it for inverted rows, it's worth it. Yeah, I stand for this. If you get rings only for doing inverted rows, you'll get a great return on your investment, I guarantee. Not to mention the many amazing exercises that you can do with them. We have a complete gymnastic ring series on gymnasticsmethod.com. Just saying link below. I personally prefer rings more than any suspension training equipment and I recommend them. Back to the exercise, let's see what are the prerequisites of the inverted rows. As with the push-ups, same with the inverted rows, the scapular movements and positioning are really important. Your scapulas need to be depressed and deducted. You can prepare and strengthen these movements dynamically or statically in your prehab program or routine with the scapular depression and deduction in rear push-up position or the same way as the inverted rows using a bar or rings in hanging. Besides the scapular movements, you can strengthen your core to keep your body straight with any exercise I mentioned so you can hit more at once. As I mentioned in my previous videos, it's worth to take your time for a complete joint preparation or prehab program. With those foundations, you can improve much easier in the basic and advanced exercises. You can keep these prehab exercises as the part of your warm-up as a prehab routine, which I recommend. 
And now let's see the key points and the technique of the inverted rows. Get in the starting position from the ground with grabbing the equipment and placing your legs to an elevated surface. In the starting position, you need to keep your shoulders and scapulas relaxed in passive hang. Keep your elbows passively straight. Keep your body straight and tight, squeeze your glutes. Keep your head in line with your body naturally. Keep your legs straight, tight and closed or in a slight straddle depending on where you do the exercise. From here, first depress, then adduct your scapulas and pull up yourself in full range of motion with bending your arms right next to your body. You don't have to do the scapula movement separately, you can do them with a continuous motion with the pulling. The point is to depress and adduct them. This is how you involve the most muscles in the motion and reach the full range of motion. The full range of motion is when you touch the bar, your hands or rings if you do it with rings. To be able to do this, your elbows need to move behind your body. These are the key points and the right technique of the inverted rows, which once again I recommend to do with elevated legs. You can think about this as the mirror of the push-ups. In the lower end point of the push-ups, your body is parallel to the ground and in the upper end point of the inverted rows, your body is parallel to the ground as well. If you don't have the opportunity to do it on an elevated surface, but you have rings for example, do it as close to the ground as possible with straight body. And again, we'll stop right here. We could see variations, but we won't. Let that be the goal. The most common mistakes are because of the lack of the prehab exercises, inactive scapulas or trunk. So shrugging the shoulders, sagging the hips, etc. All these can be easily fixed with the prehab exercises I mentioned. To learn this exercise is really simple. You can get it by simply changing the body position, same as with the push-ups. The higher you are, the higher the reps you should do. You can even do 25 to 30 reps as well, and as you progress towards the final progression, you can decrease the reps to 15, 10 or even 8. How many reps should you do from the elevated legs inverted rows? Same as with the push-ups, not more than 15. I know, I know. I have already told you this in the push-up video and I still stand for it. If you can do 15 clean reps like this, you can get great results. After that, you should rather do more intensive variations to get those gains than increasing the reps. And get this, with my students, we not even did 15 reps first, but less. For men, sometimes we did 10, and for women, only 8. For the reason I mentioned earlier, the type of muscle fibers, the stretched muscles because of the bad posture, for many people, pulling exercises are really challenging. At least, more challenging than the pushing exercises. I experienced this many times with my students, as well as to get 15 reps from 10 can be a real pain in the ass. And honestly, if someone can do 10 clean inverted rows with elevated legs, don't you think it's possible to move forward and practice pull-ups? Of course it is. We step forward regardless to the lower reps and experience an increase in the number of reps in the long run. We practice the pull-ups and the inverted rows as well and both reps improved. All this without sticking to the numbers. Conclusion, don't worry if you feel pulling exercise is more difficult and don't stick to the numbers by all means. So, inverted rows with the technique I mentioned in this video with 8, 10 or 15 clean reps. That's the goal. If you're interested in the complete proven to work gymnastics method system, you want to learn all the most effective and iconic gymnastics and calisthenics exercises and want to get a shredded physique of a gymnast, click the link below and join now on gymnasticsmethod.com. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did so, please like, share and write a comment what do you want to see in the next videos. Subscribe if you haven't already and click on the bell for more. See you next Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time.